Hey, what's going on guys? It's Dave. Um, because this is going to be a prerequisite for a whole bunch of the other videos, I just want to cover like basic SSH usage. Uh, SSH is just a program that you can use to get a remote shell. So it's for logging into a remote server, something that's running the SSH daemon. So it's a client server program. That means one end acts as a server and accepts connections, and the other end acts as a client and goes and logs in and gets a shell on that server. This is how 99.999999% of a remote administration is done, especially because most servers don't have graphical user interfaces. This is how you get a simple shell on a server, and that the nice thing is this replaces all that unencrypted stuff, so like RSH, R login, or even things like Telnet, you know, which you should never ever see in the wild, basically. This is how admins log into machines. It sets up an encrypted tunnel between wherever you start the connection from and wherever it terminates, so wherever you're logging into. And I'm just going to show you the basic syntax. Here we go. SSH username at remote host. This is the remote server. If it has a host name that you can reach, you can do that. You can also just type in an IP address. This would be a private IP address. If you leave off the username, it will automatically try to log in as your current username. Now, there's a couple different ways to use SSH. There's the password-based way, and then there's a way using cryptographic keys, which is much, much safer. So in our case here, we've got a server set up on our private network. This is its IP address. And it's listening on the standard port of 22. So it's got a TCP port open, number 22. And you could run an SSH server on a different port, but that's the standard port, and that's where it's running now. If you need to specify some other port, you can do it with the P option, and then whatever port. So this is actually the default. You don't need to type this in. But if it's running on 443, like I'll show you how to set up later, it's useful to know how to specify port numbers. Now, if I just type this, it will try to log in as Dave. I don't want that because there's no Dave user there. We're going to log in as Ubuntu at this IP address. Now, if you try this on your own shell, unless you have something listening on port 22 at this private IP address, it's not going to work. So this requires an SSH server, which I'll show you how to set up in the next video. But basically, SSH, secure shell, user Ubuntu at the IP address or host name of the server. It'll prompt you for that user's password, and that's the user's password on that remote machine. And there you are. If you see, we're here at this address. Now we can do whatever we want to do on the shell here. Blah, 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 who, etc. And then to log out, you can simply close the terminal. That's Control D to log out. That's it. Be careful, obviously, when you're on a remote machine that you don't do anything silly, like type in, uh, I don't know, or shutting it down or restarting it or doing anything that's going to compromise your connection to the machine, right? Because if you power the thing off, you're obviously going to lose your connection and not be able to get back in until someone next to the physical machine turns it back on again. But there you go. That's the very basics of just using SSH from the client side. Now, you can do a ton of stuff with SSH. It is a phenomenal tool. Almost anything that requires an encrypted tunnel you can do with it. You can use it as like a poor man's VPN, do local or remote forwarding. You just do a tremendous amount of stuff. You're going to find your yourself bouncing through a lot of SSH connections if you become an admin, a sysadmin, or really if you're just working with servers in any capacity. So there you go, the very basics. Very simple. 